is possibly the most useful software ever written. Um, and I don't know if he left, but um, our friend Sigma over there was a maintainer of it for a while, so congratulations. I will give you not a completely made up example, but I will give you an example that I just did five minutes ago just because what the hell, they were all talking about calc. And I was wondering, who's the maintainer of calc? Well, it so happens that I've got a um, Git repository of Emacs on my box here. So that's a necessary requirement for using Magit. And so here's what I did. I invoked Magit. I've got it bound to a key. Um, the key I just typed was control XG, but I don't know if that's standard or not. And that runs basically the one command you ever run, which is Magit status. Let's just confirm that that's true, yes magic status and what that's showing me is just a summary of what up in my repo and what up in my repo is I've got a couple of commits that I've made that I've never pushed up screen because what's the point but uh, there they are and um, the very very basics if you hit L a couple of times it'll show you a lock or it would if I if it was fast enough and um, can you speak up a bit for the mic? Aha, uh -huh. speak yeah. into the mic, yes. So there's a million ways of giving arguments to various commands that I glossed over, but you may have noticed when I typed L the first time, it prompted me for more goodies. And in fact, I hadn't meant to do this right yet, but you can perhaps see about halfway down that lisp slash calc is there and it's highlighted. That's because I typed it there five minutes before it, occur before it occurred to me to give a lightning talk. Um, so what I really had typed was equals F, which is a little bit weird. That's the, um, it's blue, I think, under options. That's the way you interact with this thing and give it arguments. So I typed equals F, and it gave me this prompt, which it has pre-filled. Let me show you what a regular log looks like. You can probably guess, but a regular log just shows all the commits from the top level, just as if you had typed git log. However, what I had done before is I typed L, then I typed equals F, limit two files. I typed lisp slash calc, I hit return, then I hit L again to ask for another log with these arguments. And it's not blindingly obvious, but if you look closely, you'll notice there's only a few committers shown, and all of the commit comments have something to do with calc. And that was actually the end of my investigation when I was sitting at my um, chair there, I was just curious who commits to this directory and what do they do? Let me show you how to answer that second question, what do they do? Obviously Paul Eggert is the big guy, but I've chosen some random commit and I'd like to know what's going on, so I hit enter and by golly there's some information about the commit. And this is pretty much the output of git show. But one of the super nice things about this, and this happens throughout the UI, not just this one screen, there's this notion of um, being able to hide stuff you don't care about very much the way org mode hides stuff. And just like org mode, it's on tab. So what I'm doing now is I've got the cursor on one of these file changes, and I'm hitting tab and demonstrating that it's folding and unfolding the stuff. And it actually, it can get fancier than that. You can give it numbers about how much you want it to fold, but at this point, my brain freezes. But when you're looking at a commit that touches a lot of files, it's pretty handy to be able to look just at the one you want. And that's a very brief overview of what it looks like to examine a repository. But what makes this incredibly, wonderfully fantastic, if I may say so, is, oh, there's so many things. Uh, there's um, the ability to do stages to stage little bits at a time. Let's say that I've um, added one nifty comment, and this is part of one piece of work, and then I have this other change that's completely unrelated where I fix the spelling of some important words here. So I've made two separate changes to this file, and if you use the old school Control X VL, which has been built into Emacs forever, show me my changes, there they are. So now let's look at Magit's um, equivalent of that. This is this sort of home screen, and it doesn't update until you hit 
G. So here it's trying to tell me I've made some changes. If I hit tab, not surprisingly, I'll see the um, changes that I've made. But one of the nice thing is you can stage or unstage the changes individually. And I'm doing this, you probably can't tell what I'm typing, but um, I'll go back and I'll do it again. You put the cursor on whatever it is that you want to work on, a particular hunk. Now I've got the cursor on the first hunk, now the second hunk. And let's say I've decided these are gonna be two separate commits. I can stage this hunk, and you know it did its thing because down below it says staged changes. So now I'll commit that. I hit C twice. I actually type better than this in real life, but you know. Um, so now I can stage this thing separately. It's a separate commit. But wait, there's more. You can, in addition to just staging individual hunks, you can, um, I mean, make some important stuff. Here I have two changes that are very close together, and I've decided while reviewing it that I like the more stuff, but I don't like the even more stuff. So what I can do is you can just select the stuff you want. It's a little hard to tell. I don't know about you, but I'm colorblind and I can't tell. But trust me, I selected just the first one that says more stuff. And if you hit S, it stages that. It's lying. It's making a liar out of me. Uh-oh. Let me, in a panicked way, um, do something that's still in the same hunk. Let's see. All right. So now I've got a bunch of changes, and this time for sure I'm going to stage just one of them. I'm staging this bottom one that says something else. I hit S. Woohoo, it worked. So what I've done is, if you were to do this at the command line, you'd tear your, hair, you'd tear your head off out of frustration. There is a command for to doing it. It's called git add interactive, and it's really damned tedious. And so what you can do here, basically, you look and see exactly what changes you've made. You stage exactly those bits of it that you feel like staging and you get on with your life. And you can go back and stage the other stuff later. And it's just, if you use Git and you use Emacs and you don't use this, you absolutely need to try it. It took me, honestly, a while to get into it. Part of the, most of the time was spent <laughs> figuring out that I had to type meta x magic status to get it all started. That, as far as I know, isn't actually documented anywhere. That's the one entry point. You do that, and um, it's like this whole world of flexibility open to you. And you know, I've I've touched about one percent of it. You can squash commits together without even thinking about it. Um, it's fantastic. So I will wrap up there. Cool. I'll be happy to take questions if there are questions. However, questions. Uh, have question. you used Edith for this? I have, but to be honest, I've never quite figured out how to get it to do anything useful. I know that eDiff has a, a way of helping you um, resolve merge conflicts, but I just don't get it. When I have a merge conflict that isn't really obvious, I always wind up using kdiff3 because that presents it in something I can understand. If they have in common, here's one thing, here's the other thing. Um, it, it just those two columns and you pick which one you want. Something like that, yeah. but it, it, it is integrated with Megan. I couldn't yeah. figure out how to get it to show me the common ancestor. It was something like that. I, I recommend you all give it a try, despite my not being particularly fluent with it. Okay. Other questions? Um, yes. Yeah, I can't find it now, but there, just for people to know, there is a flag in the newest version that uh, allows you to avoid having to type with a G to refresh. Um, status view, and uh, that works across all of them. It uses the new 244, like, GC file change hook, and it, it'll auto auto refresh. Um, I'm surprised I don't have that. Oh, I know why I don't have that turned on. I don't think any of that stuff works on OS 10. I think it uses iNotifier or something <coughs> like it, so us Mac users are screwed. So <laughs> it's probably turned on, it just doesn't work. No, it it works works. Uh, so if you, if you like pull changes and all your buffers, that no, works, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, what you just said 
um, works out of the box for me, which is awfully nice. But what he said was I had mentioned I had to hit G to get it to refresh. I just had a question for the room. Because Edith and Mag Magic came up. So sometimes Edith just shows up when I'm looking at Magic. Really? How do I get that to stop? Does anyone know? I would think Q. Have you looked at the bindings in the Magic buffer? Like, that would you be have a reasonable uh, solution to it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay. I know if you hit E, that it starts up again. Oh, okay. So we'll probably just unbind that. <laughs> and e. and I think. Uh, it, here's a huge, a huge, huge, huge caveat. Magic changed drastically between version one and version two to the point where it took me a while to get used to the new way. Um, so be aware of which version you're installing if you don't already have it. Not that there's anything wrong with one. Yeah. It's just very So difficult. there is uh, one question from IRC. Uh -huh. And Turret asks, um, is there... Uh, an advanced git log inside of Magit that like shows other branches or oh well um, should I yes. answer on IRC or I mean if the answer is just yes the answer like is that. yes I, I glossed over this very quickly but when I hit L the first time that didn't run the log that gave me this giant menu of further options and one of them is B which I love which um, is basically git log dash all and it does it in a nice graph. So if you type LB instead of LL, you'll see everything. That's the, the mm -hmm. short answer. Oh, I have a question that you may not know the answer to. Do you know there's a way to do the equivalent of dash capital B in Magic? Capital who? Capital B. B is in boy? I don't even know what that does in uh, the command that, line. That, so like dash lowercase b would like check out. So you'd say, uh, sorry, this is for checkout. Oh. So get checkout like some ref and then dash b that will create a new branch dash capital b will force create that new branch as so, opposed to but if you do lowercase b well, the, the quick answer is i don't know because okay. i didn't even know this option existed i wouldn't yeah. be surprised i I've, I've, I've looked briefly and then i think there is i sort of feel like mentioning something that always irks me to the point where i think it's not a good design decision but it may be right for other people on their workflows, and that is whenever I create a new branch, um, by default, what it does is it sets the upstream of that branch to whatever I created it from. For example, I've got master checked out, and I'm poking around with it, and I say, I guess it's time to create a new branch. So I create a new branch, and what Magic does by default is it sets the upstream of that new branch to be the same as the upstream that I checked out from, which is almost never what I want. What I always want is it's a development branch. I want to be able to push it independently and merge it explicitly when well, I'm done. Do you use, uh, like, implicit upstream? So I feel like usually I'm, like, pretty explicit about both the remote and the branch that I'm pushing to. I don't mind so. if it asks me, but I'm pretty sloppy. If I check out a branch named Foo, I'd really like it to just create yeah. an upstream named Foo. Yeah. Sorry. Right, so there's a flag for that, too. I'm sorry, you Actually, I found the flag, and I turned it off, and it's like it keeps coming back. <laughs> so, and I think part of this has to do with me being colorblind blind or not being able to tell whether it's enabled or not, so I don't change it, even though I didn't have it. I did find the flag, and I'm dealing with it. Yeah, so that was really cool. Thanks. Yeah, and I just want to say again um, about or say about Magit. Um, Magit is something I was really skeptical about before I first started using it because everybody says that it's awesome. And I'm like, well, if everyone thinks it's cool, it's probably not that awesome. <laughs> um, but Magit has like completely changed how I like interact with Git and it makes Git actually nice to use, which Git on the command line is like not at all. So I have very strong opinions about that. But yeah, does anyone else... Um, have a lightning talk they want to give? 